We're live from Digital Address GA006671 for Adisa Wikanda here in a Christ Time for the Morning News. I am Wendy Lai. The headlines for this morning. And Lands Commission destroyed, documents destroyed as structure housing Western Regional Office of Administrator of Stu Lands is raised by fire. We put the spotlight on Shai Osudoku District Hospital, which has not recorded a single maternal mortality over the past five years. And more on healthcare, we focus on the challenges facing inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp. On education, pupils of the Nyami Presbyterian Basic School study the has conditions. And elsewhere in the world, Indians both in fifth phase of elections and violence recorded in Kashmir. Let's start with our stories now. A newly printed CD notes with Security enhanced features are set to be released by the Bank of Ghana. The upgraded banknotes will be in circulation today. The new 10, 20 and 50 city notes will come with what the central bank says is improved durability and machine readability. It is unclear what triggered the move, but the Bank of Ghana says in a statement issued on Monday, April 8, that the decision to upgrade the three city denominations with enhanced security features is to keep up with evolving technology. According to the central bank, the principal design elements, denomination colors, dimension of the nodes and background images, among others, will remain unchanged in the newly enhanced CD nodes. The upgrade and the existing series of banknotes will co-circulate with the new ones. The Bank of Ghana said the three denominations will have optically variable magnetic image, enhanced security thread, more prominent watermark, and enhanced iridescent band at the back of the notes. The Central Bank of Ghana, in celebrating its 60th anniversary in 2017, introduced a celebratory five CD note to honor Dr. James Kreji Agri, a great philosopher and educationist in the 18th century. Away from the new CD notes, some inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp continue to administer medications even after they've completed an entire dosage prescribed by doctors. This is due to their inability to service hospital bills. Caretaker at the Gambaga alleged witches camp, Samson La, wants all inmates to be enrolled onto the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program. Zubeda Ismail visited the camp and has filed this report. Basic health care is the right of every Ghanaian citizen. This human right is duly enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. It means, irrespective of gender, physical stature, mental stability, and age, quality health care must be provided to you when the need arises. However, inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp, mostly the aged, have a difficulty accessing health care. Inmates at the camp who have been alleged to be witches with many banished from their communities feel safe here. Daily basis we go to the hospital. Sometimes I can go six, five times. Ghana in 2003, through an act of parliament, introduced the National Health Insurance Scheme. The amended Act 852 was subsequently implemented in 2004 to provide financial access to quality health care. We have registered them with the NHS. They are all card bearers. Anybody who says a card bearer, we don't joke about it. But the fact is even that sometimes the Senate carrying the NHS and the only thing they will do is to write, go and buy drugs. And, and where they, is the money? They come back here. Ideally, inmates should not have difficulty accessing health care services. But that is not the case. The situation gets tougher when their cards expire. Our difficulty now is even not sending them there. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is they will write a note 
go and buy drugs. Where is the money? That is what is killing us now. Pakrugu Bukhari, a native of Mamprugu, narrates her ordeal after she reported to the hospital with some pain in her eyes about a month ago. Her prescription had three medicines, but she received two out of the three. The third medicine, an eye drop, was not supplied. According to her, though she had the health insurance, she's a registered member of the National Health Insurance. She was only given this. And with the eye drop, they told her that um, there were 25 Ghana cities and she had to pay. At that instant, she didn't have money. And so she didn't buy it. She came back home, raised money through this business. If symptoms persist for three days, consult your doctor. A popular caution by doctors means nothing to Pakrugu. Though she has been vilified a number of times while seeking medical care, that did not deter her. Her refusal to visit the hospital for a review is not because of the vilification. <laughs> She intimates she is unable to go for review before she goes to see the doctor at the consulting room. She's also demanded to pay 25 cities, where she does not have the money. And that is the reason why she's not been able to go back and she's opted to keep taking these two medicines and keep putting this into the eye, though she doesn't seem to see any improvement. Her sight is steadily failing, but she says her intuitiveness is enough. I just inquired from her how she's able to identify between diclofenac and the paracetamol. It's interesting she's still able to do that just by failing them so the sizes are what she is she uses to identify these medicines once she fills those and she sees that they are the smaller ones she knows these this is uh, diclofenac and then she knows this is paracetamol pakurgu bukhari and the inmates meet doctors only when civil society organizations visit with doctors 2014 we got one and then uh, yeah we got another one recently, but that was last year. It's not often and often. Apart from these two, I can remember. We don't. But normally it will come when someone wants to support us to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The caretaker, Samson Lar, recounts some... Speak to the doctor. Because what came out of his mouth, I was very disappointed. What came out of the doctors? He was treating her, and I don't know whether someone prompted the person that that was the women I was taking care of. And he said, oh, they kill people and they also fear death and he said it in the language that the woman could even understand so i was like what is going on someone is sick they have just accused the person the person is not well how do you say this that's uh -huh. from a doctor a learned yes. person yes a learned, oh i can tell you that those who call themselves learned persons are even those who fear them more inmates are not vilified only when they visit the hospital by themselves as residents are unable to identify them but their ages do not allow them to walk from the camp to the hospital. I think the youngest person here is around 60 years. The youngest? The youngest. Even though 60, 55, yeah, something okay. like that. Many of them are old. Many, many of them are old. About, I tell you, 90%. Most inmates have health conditions, including mental disorders. Routine checks for such inmates would help improve. We'll not be in a queue anymore. At any point in time, if you have four women in labor and they are going to deliver, we can occupy four beds. Of course, then the luxurious aspect has been added to it. We have a VIP delivery room where it's you, your husband, and your, your midwife. The World Health Organization has identified the hospital as a possible benchmark for other health facilities in Africa regarding infrastructure and service delivery. According to the WHO, 
The hospital has set a standard that is worth emulating nationwide and in Africa, describing the environment as perfect for healing. The Minister of Health, Kweku Ajiman Menu, is impressed with the feat. I have visited Udua on about two occasions. Um, the workforce there is very well motivated, very, very seriously motivated in their commitments. And then we keep on putting investments in there. Um, their health insurance indebtedness seem to be um, getting better in terms of how much we owe the facilities. Dodua stands out a bit. However, work on the rest of the five have stalled. Health Minister explains why. We are doing a value for money audit on the facilities that they should do and complete. Um, they have held back their work because we wanted to complete the uh, body for body audit on how far they have gone. Soon we will restart working. Crown Agents is about completed with the body for money audit and when we find the challenges in there, we will continue to complete the rest of them. If the remaining five comes on stream, many lives will be saved. The Shai Osudoku District Hospital is the first modern district hospital to be built and the government's policy of bringing healthcare delivery to the doorsteps of all Ghanaians. The ultra-modern 120-bed hospital was constructed by NMS Infrastructure Limited with funding from UK government through Barclays Plus at the cost of $175 million. The hospital forms part of government's agenda of building first-class healthcare facilities in every district to improve access to healthcare delivery across the country. Away from health, construction works on the Community Day Senior High School at Denyame in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono region has been abandoned. Stanley Ni Blewu reports 100 bags of cement meant for a project have been gone bad. The National Democratic Congress government started the Community Day Senior High Schools intended to serve students who could not gain admissions into boarding schools and also bring relief to parents. 46 out of the 200 planned Community Day Senior High Schools initiated by the NDC government were completed before handing over power to the new Patriotic Party administration in January 2017. 123 of the schools were under construction. The Nyami, a farming community in the Doma Central Municipality, is a beneficiary of the project. The project, however, has stalled since late 2016. A visit to the site by the mission team saw five wheelbarrows and a concrete mixer left to rot. Iron rods have also been left at the mercy of the weather. 100 bags of cement kept meant for the project have cake in this wooden structure. This is a project that was abandoned long before we came into office. Uh, though it was started by the previous administration, they had abandoned it before we came into office. Um, I remember in 2017 when I visited the site, the contractor had left well over a thousand bags of cement that had gone bad, completely caked. If you go to site today, you might still see them there. Um, the school was not complete, yet somebody had supplied a set of furniture for almost 1,000 students. Um, so I was like, how come the project is not complete, yet you know, we are seeing some of these things there. Chief of the Nyami told the mission team, the community used 200 bags of cement to undertake expansion works on their health center while the remaining 800 caked beyond use. We need to know 1,000 bags in the Ministry of Education. They are aware they brought a team from Accra to come and have a look at the school. And I know that the plans are you know, advanced to let the contractors come back to site to take care of the project. After completion, the school is expected to absorb the large number of pupils churn out from junior high schools in the municipality. Commitment would be required to complete the project to improve access to education in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4. 
to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Stanley Nibleu, TV3 News, Denyame, Doma Central, Bono Region. To one of our headline stories in the entire structure of the Western Region Office of the Administrator of School Lands in 2nd D was raised down by fire. Eyewitnesses say the fire occurred during a power outage in 2nd D around 7 a.m. Sunday. Meanwhile, hundreds of land documents were destroyed in the fire. Eyewitnesses say moments after the power outage, smoke was seen bellowing from the office of the former regional lands commissioner, said Owusubwaji, an officer of the lands commission who was on his way back from church on seeing the smoke dashed into the building for a fire extinguisher by which time a fire tender had arrived. Close to 10 fire tenders were deployed to doze the flames. Though personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service did their best, the overbearing fire kept spreading into adjoining offices. Most part of the building was made of wood, which aided the spread of the fire. Documents covering various lands in the western region were burnt. Cadastral plans and plans of upcoming projects, stamping, documents covering two lands in all 35 offices has been lost to the fire. Some of the workers whose offices were destroyed say it will be difficult to recover the documents. According to them, the offices were not automated. They express worries some unscrupulous persons may take advantage of the fire and make claims to documents they have not paid for. According to one revenue officer, thousands of CDs in revenue collected from the previous week has been lost to the fire. The Deputy Western Regional Minister Gifty Kusi, Regional NADMO Coordinator Abdul Ghaniru, Sekendi Takwade Chief Executive Anthony KK Sam, and other stakeholders visited the scene. Board Chairman of the Western Region Lands Commission, Dr. Isaac Kofi Sego, said a committee will be instituted to investigate the fire disaster. There is a backup system, so we need to evaluate what has happened tomorrow. So it's from there that we know uh, uh, what information that can be retrieved from the backup, backup system and then what is totally lost. The cause of the fire will be ascertained after investigations are concluded. We'll bring you more updates on that story in our subsequent bulletins. Now to international news and India's Northern Heartland began voting on Monday in the fifth phase of the staggered general election with Prime Minister Narendra Modi hoping his record on national security will win him a second five-year term. More than 87 million people across seven states are eligible to vote on Monday, including the northern states of Jammu and Kashmir, where Muslim separatists have been fighting the security forces for decades. The separatists have called for a boycott of the vote in the Muslim majority Kashmir as protesters threw stones at polling stations and at least one person was shot and wounded when police opened fire, the police has said. Militants also threw a grenade and a petrol bomb at polling stations, but there were no injuries. Now, the seven-phase general election began on April 11. The last vote will be cast on May 19. And that will be all for the news this morning. I am Wendy Lai, but New Day continues. Well, good morning. It's Monday, the 6th of May, and I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Very, very excited. Uh, I'll tell you why later on. But right, good morning. How are you doing, Big Brad? Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> good morning, too. Hope you're doing great. Uh, Charlie, Had a fantastic weekend. Fine, uh, a, a, a wonderful, historical weekend, mm -hmm, as you call mm -hmm, it. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll tell you the good news later <laughs> on, but it was indeed a fantastic one. And... Um, how would you love to, uh, at, at that age, and then uh, you have, uh, you began a journey some time ago, and at a point in time, that journey begins to uh, see some uh, uh, fruit, as you put it that mm. way. So, over the weekend, the big news is that Mr. and Mrs. Hughes welcomed <laughs> into their home a newborn baby, Kwesi, by name. Johnny is now a father. Oh, Papa. boy. Papa, 
Yeah. Can see Papa? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, Fantastic. The, Fantastic. The, the, bigger, the bigger thanks goes to my, my wife, uh, Mrs. Regina Hughes. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, the bigger one goes to her. And uh, a special know. one, a special I thanks know. to all the folks at the uh, airport women's hospital. They right. did fantastic. Great. They were fantastic mm. as well. So, uh, all right. Yeah, so, a new one is at home. So, that's it. The, the, the next new one we're talking about is the new CD mm. notes. Uh, right. It's in town this morning. Yeah. And uh, yes, you have to look uh, sharp. You have to look sharp. Maybe <laughs> if you join a couple of top floor taxis, you could uh, get You one could one get some. From one CD to 50 CDs. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, if you get a 50 CDs, fine. If not, S say again. Accept. If you get a 50 cities, fine. If not, 50 cities. Uh, take the ones from, like from where? <laughs> some some <laughs> thought, thought that they should join this morning. But anyway. that, those are the notes on your screens and yeah. the new ones. We're told they have very uh, great security features there. And uh, the thread, we're told, is enhanced. Uh, there's also what they call the optically variable magnetic image. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's all in there. As well as the, there's a more prominent watermark. Uh, that thing that you see when you turn uh, the yeah, note against yeah, um, a light. light. Uh, mm. So a uh, lot of enhancement to our city. Let's pray for the city. Okay. Uh, well, why don't we wait for the new city? I know. I hope we don't come back uh, in in the next two, three years. No, no, come no, and see. Well, we have to, yeah, you know, yeah, bring no, back no, fresh notes. Back. And mm, yeah. anyway, but the something worrying happened at the University of Ghana campus. Mm. The around the Evandi Hostel uh, and uh, Pentagon, well. we're told that a level three hundred psychology student mm. was attacked by armed robbers. Yeah. His head has been slashed and is receiving medical treatment now. And it's becoming a regular feature. Mm. The, the question the students are asking is, look, you take money from people to, to get into the school to use their, right. their, their roads. Protect uh, them. Protect them. You take That's fees. Yes, like yes. So light up the place. Mm -hmm. How difficult is that? And, and why would we have to wait until people get maimed and attacked and robbed of their valuables before we go and, and deal with it? It's, it's obviously It, it is. Johnny, yeah. Legon uh, has uh, several places that it, they're not too good to use at mm. night and mm. low. Mm. If you remember a couple of, uh, some years back, uh, there were report, I mean, regular daily report of people being attacked, mm -hmm. students being attacked and all that. Right. I, I, I still think that the, the, the lighting system isn't too good. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Some places that if you use at night, uh, you would imagine what could happen if someone is there and mm. alone. Uh, even when you are entering, the, the, the open entrance mm. from, uh, is it Shashi? Mm -hmm. When you are climbing, mm, it's not mm. too safe. It's but not, you find it's not a lot of students. Right, well, around that place. E even around the bus stop, the bus the, the bay. Yes, yes. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not visible at mm. all. And, and I don't know why, but I mean, a university that uh, boasts of being one of the finest in that Africa is. should should have these as, as the basics. Mm. I mean, it, it should not be difficult for, for these things to be done where we have students being attacked you know, before they, they came to school to learn, not to be, uh, you know, beating. And uh, you cannot say you have a curfew for university students no, because, you can, you can well, if he goes to the library to read and he decides to come back home after 10 after p.m., 10 you know, <laughs> it, it's no crime mm. to want to stay and mind, as we call it, you know, up to like 10 or 11 p.m. And there's no crime about that. So uh, our, our folks on the weekend to uh, Professor uh, uh, Joseph Hansen, Kwabenan Ketia was laid to yes. rest. Yes. Uh, a national uh, funeral of mm. um, a lot of tributes from those who know him. Mm. Uh, I, he, I, I remember my, my days at Legon when uh, I was in the, uh, the Methodist uh, choir, mm. the Mepsu choir. I mean, his, his compositions were one of those that would always love to um, uh, do. Right. And uh, there are several students whom he impacted, mm. and one of which is a, a guy, uh, Antonio Sebwatin. Mm. Uh, he has actually gone ahead to do some compositions. He right. actually uh, was a choir master for uh, Pax Romana, okay. Lincoln, another great guy. Mm. He, Professor Ketia is always, I, I like choral music. Okay. And so you hear him and you hear wisdom. You yeah. hear him and you hear encouragement. Mm. You hear him and there's so much you, you learn from right. him. So I was so surprised about the tributes mm. that were paid from the presidency to, I mean, everyone mm. there. Such a fantastic guy. And he's gone, but 
his compositions are there. He's written a lot, right. and I'm sure we'll learn a lot from him. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll learn a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a few, uh, still a few who are with us. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, Jack Odimo himself right. is with us. There is are there. many of them like that. And Jack Odimo himself has called those people libraries on foot, uh, libraries on fire. You know, he's called them libraries on fire because we have not tapped so much into what they have to offer. The Emu Taylors of this world, uh, you know, name them. So many of them. Mm. Uh, Professor Adidohos of this world. We have, look, Atukwil Kain has just died and, and gone. We have not really, really tapped into what they have. There's something about them that makes the world come to celebrate them. Mm. And that's what we need to find. Are we tapping that? Are no, we are not tapping. tapping. I mean, you see, so we are allowing all of them to age, grow, and die off. Mm. Age, grow, and die. Because uh, the late Professor uh, Inketia, even as of that age, was still, you know, very, very articulate and teaching people. Mm. I remember that uh, TV3 went to have an interview with him, and he was explaining some of the concepts behind the songs and the storylines and the wisdom and, and the nuggets of wisdom that we could get from it, even at that age, you know, when it was frail and weak and all of that. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't augur well for us as a country. I mean, we should have a museum where we can really, really put the works of these persons there, these giants there, mm. and have people go to it and learn from it. There certainly must be something that we keep complaining that our current trend of music is not as heavy as the music from back in the day. Why? Because the rudiments of the music itself is not being taught to the people. Right. People think that, well, the lyrics must be reduced to love and somebody shaking bum bum in front of a camera <laughs> and, and people drinking alcohol, wearing swim costume or dipping themselves in water and <laughs> having flashy cars and smoking their lives away. That is celebrity -like status and that is what we should see in our videos. What we consistently show the public mm. will be what will be picked by the younger generation. Yeah, they will mirror what they They will see. mirror it. <laughs> so why can't we, like James Varekama of mm. Harmonious Quran, he's doing a fantastic job. Right. He, look at his compositions. We are not supporting them. Well, we are not. <clears throat> why? Let's see. But good morning uh, to Asante Hinnin's team. Fantastic uh, job over the weekend to mm. trying to woo investors to Ghana. Um, a lot of uh, hope is there. And yeah. uh, if all the chiefs uh, get on board, I guess we'll have a lot more people get to see Ghana as the destination for investment. And so uh, kudos to all of you who went yeah. with him mm. and uh, to all those who have been actually uh, attached to come to Ghana. Ghana is open. Uh, for business, mm. uh, there are opportunities everywhere, as the Asante Hin said. There are so much opportunities yeah. for you if only you come and take a look at it. Let, let me say a quick happy birthday uh, to Togbiga, Togbi, Togbiga, well, Ati Plaja, Agbi Yao, the okay. eighth. You are the newly installed Paramount Chief of Palime, traditional area in oh, the South that is Elvis District hometown. of the Volta region. Oh, yes, okay. this is senior Elvis <laughs> Daku. It's your birthday today. Right. Chief, live long and uh, rule wisely like Solomon. A belated one to you, uh, Dr. Johnson Isiama, former second deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana. Yesterday, fifth May was your birthday. May God grant you abundant blessings, long life, good health, and prosperity. This is from senior Elvis Daku. And congratulations one more time to uh, to Tom Brody and to all our friends at the mm. uh, Airport Women's Hospital. We celebrate you this morning. Ikea Santua, good morning to you as well. We're ranting. Let's hit the streets. Adenta footbridges are in focus now. The social media trolls will break your heart. But the engineers have also been explaining that it was because of the considerations for persons living with disability, not necessarily the aesthetic value of, of the design. <laughs> what have you been saying? Let's hit the streets. Good morning and welcome to Daily Ones here on New Day. My name is Josh Quinney. We are live on DSTV channel 279. And one of the six foot bridges on the Adentan Marginal Highway has been completed and open for use. But residents are disappointed at the nature of the facility. And for them, it's too winding and zigzag. But these are people who are complaining about the road accidents on that very stretch. And so if these foot bridges have been uh, completed for use, why the complaint? Would well, you call them as ingrate or their calls are in the right direction? This is Daily Rand. Let's keep talking. At first, they were demanding for footbridge and then uh, it has come. So they should take it like that. It's better than none. 
because it was the people were dying, you know, that was then when it wasn't there. But today it is there. I think even if it is long, they can manage and then walk over it and then they will have uh, their way out. On the Obi pen in them, someone want to cross fast and go to other lane. That's why they normally use the road. So if you are trying to help us, help us in the limit that you see, it's not only youth travel on the uh, on, on on that thing. My brother, People are going to travel on it. No, I didn't say no, no, the thing no, no, is no. done. It's nice, but make sure if you are making it disabled friendly, that's what they are trying to put the the the, the team. Fine, but if you look, if you go there and see the length that that disabled person going to pass through one, two. Three, four, before you get to the main point and better. cross to that place, it's, it's better. better for the person it's not. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. None. Oh, there be many soon. And yet, and yet, 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 Yes, sir. Only person discuss about being here. I say, I don't know why you're who cost me. And I say, say, say. Now why should I have cost me? I cannot be a brand for say. No, no, no. David, let's look at that. Let's look at that. It is not about say saving life. I, I, I read a comment on on either the minister or the MP saying said they should use that a form of exercise something. Yeah, so what was the use of this? You do something to help somebody. To cross road, you are the same person telling us that you're using as a form of exercise. In what way? He's George, is it let's call a speed a speed? First, we're having problems because we didn't have a footbridge. The road is very risky and then it's very dangerous. You understand? People were even student recently a student passed on because of the road. You understand? So now we have a footbridge. Whichever way it is, whether long or short. The, the, the thing is, what we wanted, they have brought to us simple. If you tell me that if you have to go and put the towel, I mean, what do you mean? When you are crossing the road, eh? tell it's serious. That, that, that stretch, you can take, you can take minutes or, or, or some, some, some hours to cross that road because that road is not, not an easy road. Understand? So if you tell me that you should put a towel on yourself to uh, walk on just as a uh, foot bridge, what are you telling me? You see, we do foot bridge and you see uh, goats. Go to uh, walk on the footbridge, and human beings are still crossing. We don't want to. We don't want to change because of system. Whichever way it is, it is saving life. If if the disabled is able to walk, with two days, one year, it saves life. It's better. So let me give an example. The footbridge at Spana, Accra Mall. Just look at even the the the, the, the type of busy stuff going there, uh, going on at around that place, and compare it to the footbridge at Medina. Which one do you think is the best? Fine. We needed the bridge at Medina. But it's too long, and I don't know if if it's an M something. Now, also, also, a long long. That was a remedy to curtail the death on the stretch, baby. Oh no, no, that was a remedy. It is not true. And yano kwe kwe kwe. Yeah, per foot bridge. You know me the bufwa kwa kwe ibiya bisi. Baby, tell me, tell me. Me kasi miyacho. Me kasi miyacho. Sa sa adetu tente no moye. Do you know sa the number of foot bridge a bit maya no kwa. Hey, that time. Before frost. But you jump before far come. I spend this car. This is Ghana. Remember, 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 remember. Chen, money me said this. Remember, food bridge is so I'm more complete. No, it's our car bridge. Ebi o. Ebi o. Shadi o. Bibi ni. Okay, yeah, Shadi o. You are making a food bridge for us. Oh, and this food bridge is trying to carry people across the road so that they won't get hurt. Fine, it's a good idea. Chen, who person am I then? Disabled friendly. But so we could dinner ho. Oh. Next, I will share the length now in Panama for four across, and some will be do or no. Fine, that it, it, it saves lives. But uh, someone or white people won't. Oh, be back out, be back, oh, be back, be back, oh, be back out, oh, be back out. No, I can say residents of Madina Adanta, they are in greater. It's, it's not far from the truth. Let me let me say something here. What my brother said, say. Oh yeah, now what they are doing In fact, me pa say me pa ni chao so on kan on some kan che the public say oh you're very sorry for saying that. It is very wrong to say that. Oh you on fun are doing it in tone. Look at look at Ghanaians. Look at Ghan. We need it. We've gotten it. We are complaining. We don't have it. We're still complaining. So what do we want as in a whole? Now since it's going to protect the people from crossing, I think it's the best. No matter how long it is. It's the best. For me, I'm for it. You see, you see, for, for me, if you see that bridge, 
those people who have relatives who have passed on on that road, when they see this bridge, they would have said that, oh, this bridge have come earlier, like my my relative would have died. You understand? So let me tell you, you can stay in traffic for hours. You don't complain. But what should we do? Aside, aside the provision of these food bridges, yeah, yeah since maybe I will just stop there, you know, the death stretch. I almost start complaining, sir. Maybe I'm from one foot bridge to the other, no? I can't do so well. And to me, I have a feeling, sir, they will still cross the road. No, it's yes, yes, what I'm it's true. True. Look, and the, the way I say, um, um, we are the one I saw online at the, uh, outside the country was just some metal stuff. And I'm not sure, sir, that thing will cost. I'm not sure, sir, that thing will cost. Well, look at the number of concrete. That cement used. They can use to put the, the portals on the, uh, on the motorway. On the motorway, look at the number of concrete and cement they used in that place. Then to do that long thing. How can somebody sitting on a wheelchair pass through that thing? No. Yeah, yeah. Ghana for you, we just want your fitness club, my own. And I say you need a cock or jog your home. Yeah, yeah. A bit of my boy. Why you so concrete? They don't move it, you know. A waste of money. I didn't commit my idea. I call. To say I broke the chain, I met her. Yes, 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 yes. Where are you from? Before I jump, where is Anna? Ah. Whoever uses the, no, 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 the, the road without using the footbridge, that person, whatever happened to the person, is his or her own cup of tea. Because let me tell you something. It is there, it is there for us to pass on. Just because of what? Protection. Safety. So if you said that um, because of the thing is too long and, and stuff, and stuff, so you are going to pass, you know, use other other routes. Then whatever happens to you is your own cup of tea. If you tell me you have wasted concrete, I mean, how much did it cost us to do the motorway? You know the concrete equipment we use, and now it's still working. You see, want to do shabby work and then go. You see, let me tell you, let me. It's not, it's not, it's not a matter of uh, how long the bridge is old. It's just to protect life. How much is life and how much is cement? How much? Welcome back to the show. The BNFT this morning says that the value of media entertainment industry to hit one billion US dollars. Uh, that's some analysis done by Price uh, House Water Coopers. And then the Ghanaian Times says fertilizer for farmers and the planting for food and jobs. 50,000 bags smuggled out last year to neighboring countries. Um, the upgraded Ghana City notes. Uh, are here on the front page of the Ghanaian uh, Times. The Asante Forum uh, is there, captured by the Times. Asante rallies international support for Ghana beyond aid. The finder says that the AGM Acre Energy Deal ratified, paid interest reduced, free interest increased. That's a big one. We certainly will take a look at that. If we take to the daily graphic, a uh, photograph of Meridian Hotel. Uh, criminals take over that hotel, facilitating a death trap. That's how uh, the Daily Graphic put it. And uh, GHS, that is the Ghana Health Service, not implementing malaria vaccine trial. And turn attention to Ghana's interior, as Santahini tells investors. Imani retract injurious statement against KK Sapon fuel trade, fallout from the uh, now ratified. Uh, AGM Acre deal. We'll take a look at those stories. And um, uh, Gritco is uh, assuring that uh, there will be no power outages. We are addressing challenges. Gritco assures Ghanaians. Uh, we'll take a look at those stories once my guests are comfortably seated. And to do the talking this morning, uh, a Deputy uh, Minister of Information, a member of the NPP, uh, obvious, and uh, Pius and I'm Hajide is here. Good morning. Great. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. We did. We okay. did. Were well, you committed to support the Asantehini? Unfortunately, you I couldn't was make not it. Able to. Grateful for your time. Member of Parliament for the uh, Busa uh, South uh, constituency, a member of the NDC, Honourable uh, Clement, Dr. Clement Park, is here. Good morning. Salua. Salua. Kubasa. <laughs> and you respond, Kubasa. Kubasa. Very well. Good morning, Brad. I hope you're fine, too. It's always a pleasure to be you here. You couldn't join us and him, too. Uh, I, I really wish I could, but uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. I know many other Ghanaians who are there, to, there. to represent all of us in uh, urging him on to continue the good works 
that he has been uh, doing on our behalf. Okay, we're grateful for your time this morning. Certainly, let's start from your house, Parliament, and uh, the finder says that the deal has been ratified. Uh, the story uh, says that uh, Parliament has approved the amended deal with AGM Petroleum for oil exploration, the deep southwest tunnel oil block. The critical decision to accept the recommendations of Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee was made through a voice vote supervised by the Speaker, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, uh, amidst the position from the NDC minority. Even the Committee of Mines and Energy was divided when it sat in chambers to consider the contract. This was evident in the recommendations rep report it presented to the August House. It admitted that its conclusions were were not unanimous, but a majority decision. And so uh, that's the story. If you take a look at graphic, uh, daily graphic, page 20, Imani uh, has retracted some, uh, what the paper says, injurious statements against KK Sapon and fuel trade. It is based on this same story. Uh, policy think tank Imani Ghana has apologized and reserved it to the chief executive of the GNPC and fuel trade and, and for injurious statement made against them on April 25. Uh, the uh, apology was captured in a three-paragraph press statement titled Retraction and Apology to KK, Dr. KK Sapo and Fuel Trade. And uh, Daily Graphics says they have a copy of that apology. Let's start from this one. Uh, Pao, so uh, the issue was on uh, the press conference by Mani resulted in the back and forth the accusations and counter accusations. Eventually, Parliament has ratified the deal. Uh, Imani uh, has apologized to uh, people they felt they had uh, injured in a way. Now, what can we take from this? The brouhaha about the whole uh, uh, process. Well, uh, thank you very much, Bright. Mm -hmm. Good morning to you, my uh, colleague here, and to the cherished viewers of. Uh, TV3 and I also would like to seize this opportunity to uh, continue to congratulate the good people of this country for keeping faith uh, with their government mm. uh, without a doubt uh, we are on track with the restoration agenda and it is important that we carry the people with us uh, on uh, this matter of an apology from Imani, I think that I would say that the honorable thing to do in any such instance would be to offer an unqualified apology. And uh, you recall that Dr. K.K. Sapon, immediately after the Imani Forum, had cause to issue a, a statement and to caution that he was going to go to court if Imani did not uh, retract and apologize. Now they have retracted and apologized. I mean, some of us would want to uh, intervene uh, on their behalf and appeal to Dr. K.K. Sapon uh, to let this one pass. Even though it is becoming increasingly worrisome that we malign and uh, cheap at the integrity of people on very huge platforms. A huge platform like the forum that uh, Imani uh, got, they organized the major press conference chaired by Professor Akilak Basoya. I mean, was aired on major networks across this country and caused grievous harm to the integrity of somebody only to go back a few days later to scribble a few pages of apology that without doubt does not get the kind uh, of media leverage that the earlier character assassination got is problematic for those of us in public space yes we have responded to the call to serve the people of Ghana mm. but that does not mean uh, that uh, we do not deserve to be treated properly and fairly. My colleague here is also in the public space 
it will be unfair and incorrect to try to abuse the fact that he has offered himself into public service. Uh, we deliberately uh, pedal falsehood about him only with a view to apologizing later. But it's happened already. It would be my intervention on their behalf that we let go. They got it entirely wrong when they said that uh, Dr. KK Sapon and his family uh, were involved in the ownership of world trade. This is a basic uh, 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 matter which I believe Imani uh, had the capacity to have found out. I mean, if we wanted to find out the ownership of companies, it's not rocket science. The Registrar General's Department is just a stone throw away. It's not rocket science. And they have, the Imani has, has a record of, of doing this before in times past. They have been able to check uh, ownership and uh, even shareholder, shareholder structure of companies. How come something they did in the past, they forgot or failed to do in this instance, is mind-boggling. Uh, but that's not the only thing they got wrong. In that earlier Imani engagement, they got a lot of things wrong. They, for instance, said that Ghana was losing, uh, was going to lose some $30 billion. Mm. I mean, it's magic calculation they did. All they did was to take the current rate uh, and the fuel price and multiply by the total uh, uh, petroleum deposit institute. I mean, it's, it, is, it is a very fundamental error in calculating in the industry because we know about a recovery rate in the industry. And it cannot be that when a certain quantity of oil is estimated to lie under the ground, then you calculate all of that as revenue. Because not all of that actually mm -hmm. comes up. And that is why there's a recovery rate. And any uh, level 100 economic student, or this is not economics, mathematics students who understands that there is a recovery rate, will do the multiplication. And they, they are very alarmist, because if they mention 30 billion, the people of Ghana were going to be incited that, that we are losing that much without bearing in mind that Ake has brought in technology that Hess did not even have. Hess, I'm rather sold off to Ake. And uh, technology that Hess did not have, which would even enable a, a, a higher extent of exploration. Currently, the, rec the recovery rate is at 25. We are hoping 25%. We are hoping that with the kind of technology that Ake is bringing on board, we can move recovery rate to between 35, 40% thereabout. And that is another thing they got wrong. Another issue they got wrong, and which for me formed the very basis for their press conference, was that there was a need, the minister was uh, involved in a new petroleum agreement. It was not new? I mean, the minister does not have that power. A petroleum agreement is the sole reserve of parliament. And only parliament can do a new petroleum agreement. A plan of development, POD, is in the minister's discretion to, to act upon. And the POD is not a new petroleum agreement. And they also again argued that, oh, because uh, 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 ECA uh, published or uh, published a POD, and so ECA was determining what must happen. No, it is not a, a determination. It is what the law says, that the contractor was going to propose a POD. And that 30 days after the minister receives the POD, the minister must communicate consent or otherwise. And the failure to communicate uh, 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 that we were not happy or we were not going to use that POD meant that the POD could have been used. They argued that the minister didn't do that without cross-checking, only to know later or to be told that the minister had actually gone through the processes of responding to Ake's POD and indeed did write back to Ake and mm. indicated to Ake that we were not going to accept the POD in that current uh, nature. It was, and not gave, the, it was not the back of the money uh, allegation? No. Okay. The, the letter had gone way ahead. In fact, if Imani had just checked, the law says that when the minister receives a POD from a contractor, the minister forwards the POD 
to the Petroleum Commission. And so the minister indeed did send uh, the, the, the POD to the Petroleum Commission. And that alone means that the minister was taking action in conformity with the law. And the minister received advice from the Petroleum Commission, agreed with the advice, and forwarded the letter to Ake, telling them that we were not going to accept the, P the POD in that nature, and gave them 45 days to come back with a new POD. But Imani claims that uh, the, min the minister was derelict in his duty, and that uh, uh, it means that uh, Ake was going to go ahead and implement the POD in the manner in which it was. Plus several others, for instance, that there was no dynamic or pressure communication between appraisal wells that were drilled uh, by, 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 uh, by uh, Ake. Those appraisal wells were inherited programs. It was a program that has had before has sold off. And you recall the Itlos ruling that uh, 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 C, C boundary dispute we had with uh, La Côte d'Ivoire and we had to take it for international arbitration, affected HES's program to a certain extent. So when uh, Ake inherited HES, Ake asked for an extension of time to do appraisals. And appraisals can be done with the minister's permission even after the, the seven-year period that the law uh, allows, because it was so, inherited. So perhaps, as well. be, be, because of time, is it your suggestion that uh, uh, Imani did not in any way contribute to any review of this process that has been beneficial to Ghana at all? Well, I cannot, I, I would not want to make that uh, kind of conclusive statement. Mm. I mean, we must encourage uh, participation and we must encourage civil society participation, ordinary civil, uh, citizen participation, and it may contribute. So I will not say that it did not contribute. I am worried about the fact that uh, increasingly a major uh, civil society organization such as Imani would fail to do some of the basic checks that uh, are fundamental. Not, you, you won't, to, you won't to, consider to, this to, as what, what, some isolated case? Well, I, 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 I don't know because in any case... Because you said increasingly. In yeah, but I, mean, it's, uh, no, it's, I mean, there's another one uh, that they have just published uh, and I've, I was reading it uh, through it la last night. And I, I, and I noticed, even without being uh, an energy expert or an industry uh, practitioner, there were some obvious uh, limitations on the part of the publication would you, uh, would, uh, from Iman. Would you also say that, for instance, the Mines Energy Committee that sat on the case itself was divided. So does it not suggest that perhaps uh, Iman has contributed to perhaps bringing out things that we need to know? No, I mean, as for committee levels, the divisions at the committee level, it's not new. I, I, they are, on most of these, on most occasions, uh, people get into Parliament with different motivations, into these committee meetings with different motivations. Mm. And that's why we have encouraged that. Let us uh, act as Ghanaians first and not members of, for instance, the MPP or members of the NDC. In the case of, and if I can jump and go to AGM, one of the, for Quickly, the, so that for the, the uh, uh, minority, the, the, the Select Committee mm. on Energy, the minority took a position uh, that surprised many about Med Songhai, uh, which is owned by uh, a Ghanaian. And if I go to the history of Med Songhai and their uh, connection to the AGM, how a former member of the GMPC board, Mr. Chuchurupoku, uh, who was on the GMPC board, who was in fact chairman of the GMPC Exploco, was also a director uh, on Med Songhai and was actually one of the witnesses for AGM. It's confusing, but at the end of the day, the, the and Chuchu Poku is a, is a towering figure of the NDC. He was in the, on the NDC board. Again, uh, GMPC ex Bloco even had the opportunity to buy a 10% shares uh, in, in, in HES at the time. M budgetary allocation was made. Uh, but maybe my senior colleague is here, he will explain to us why okay. in 2015 and in 2016 mm. budgetary allocation was made for Ghana to acquire a 10% interest in, in the oil block. But they failed to utilize that, even though the money was somewhat okay. utilized. I okay. mean, you can get as much. So, so, so mm -hmm. the fact that there was division mm. uh, on the subcommittee 
that really doesn't mean much. What were they divided on is maybe what we need to interrogate. Okay, right. Grateful. Very well. Thanks for having me, mm. as always, and uh, to say good morning to viewers. Mm. I know the people of uh, Fumbisi and Busa South uh, are watching, and they are still expecting you. Will be very, very soon. Well, first of all, I think it is important that uh, I acknowledge that today is the first day of Ramadan. So it is only fair and proper mm. that uh, we reach out uh, to our Muslim brothers and sisters as uh, they begin the process today as uh, required by the tenets of uh, their religion. Uh, quite clearly, we all understand the benefits of uh, trying to uh, commune with God and get much more closer. If there was ever a time that we needed the Supreme Being's intervention in the affairs of our nation, uh, so I said today is the beginning of Ramadan. Mm. Uh, we wish them well, and uh, the rest of us who are not Muslims uh, will do our best to ensure that uh, they are able to undertake their religious obligation uh, in ways that uh, uh, would endure to our collective uh, benefit. Uh, it is also proper that uh, I also acknowledge journalists uh, across the country, across the world, uh, in the wake of the celebration of the Press Freedom Day. And, uh, it is my hope that we'll get to touch base on that because there are some very worrisome developments in as far as that terrain uh, is concerned. But they must be commended and encouraged to soldier on in spite of what is clearly uh, a very reactionary approach by the current government and uh, Issa Parachiks. Uh, and indeed, we all know that now journalists are going into hiding. Some are being flown out of the country um, under the auspices of uh, somebody that uh, is credited for repealing the criminal libel law. I think it's a very important subject that uh, must be looked at. Now to the, the issue at hand. Look, let's face it, I am no spokesperson for Imani, mm. and it is not my responsibility to try and intercede or intervene on their behalf. Uh, we all know the history of uh, this uh, think tank, civil society organization, and the contributions it has played uh, over the years. Uh, like them or hate them, they have come to stay, they do their work, they present their findings, uh, in a very forceful way because they, they truly believe that the work they do is credible. And I'm actually surprised that for a government that in opposition uh, seemed to have enjoyed greatly from uh, work done by Imani, <laughs> today it seems as though the MPP in power uh, is querying Imani, and not only Imani, but many other organizations and institutions uh, that heeded to many thought uh, were cozy with uh, the then uh, opposition. Uh, perhaps it's just another sign of the intolerance and the fact that, you know, once you are in the kitchen and you begin to know the, 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 the levels of the temperature, uh, it has implications for the way you, you react. But you see, we cannot discuss this issue uh, regarding what we believe as a minority to be a ripoff. Uh, without giving the, the, the proper context. And that is why you read the story to do with the disagreement at the committee level. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that was also reflected on the floor. Uh, in many ways, it is unfortunate that our system uh, of governance, and particularly our practices in parliament, unlike some other democracies, do not give us the chance to vote and be recorded for votes taken. So that even where you are opposed to a particular bill uh, becoming law by virtue of being in the minority, which presupposes that you don't have sufficient numbers. When it is passed, the rendition or the narrative is that parliament has passed, has passed it, when indeed you have not been agreeable to what happened. And that is exactly the position of the minority because uh, indeed <laughs> our position was made clear even before uh, we, we took that vote. And, and our argument is very clear and straightforward. Now, the request that was brought to Parliament to renegotiate this agreement uh, was not new, and as far as our knowledge is concerned. This is a request that was made when uh, the former Minister for uh, Energy was still in office, uh, Mr. Jaku. And so 
he didn't see it fit or acceptable. And so if he did not see it fit and acceptable, probably likely because he didn't think that it was going to inure to the benefit of the good people of this country, and therefore was not willing to go along. And then there is a change uh, within the context of the claim that the former minister misled the president on another matter to do with uh, the Ameri deal. What has changed to the extent that with the coming into office of a new minister, suddenly room has been made for a renegotiated agreement? And right, it is very simple and straightforward. We know what was in existence before uh, what happened on, on Friday. Mm. And it is very clear that we are losing or we have lost because now it has been passed. Except, of course, if, when there is a change of government, which we know is going to happen, we can really look at some of these things. But the fact is that we have lost 58% of, of our, our ownership. Our stake in it. In as far as this is concerned. Now, you must also remember that GNPC has invested colossally into what we are talking about, in excess of $30 million. And so when we had an arrangement that gave us Ghanaians, say 10% royalty, GNPC interest at 10%, GNPC additional interest at 15%, and what have you, and yet you now have a renegotiated arrangement that gives royalties, maintaining royalties at 10%, GNPC uh, carried interest at 15%. And indeed, additional GNPC interest now reduces to 3%. And we are now even also giving reliefs at a time when we don't even fully understand the owners of the subordinate company known as Quad. Then it raises a lot of serious and fundamental challenges. Who are we doing this to benefit? And so when you tell me that we are doing this because, you know, Aka Energy is bringing technology. Let me ask you one simple question. And the reason is because the technology is going to come and enhance, you know, the recovery, the recovery rate. rate, and that it is not proper for us, or in this case, uh, uh, Imani, mm. to try and, 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 and calculate on the basis of what he describes as pedestrian pedestrian basis to calculate and come up with an analysis of what we are going to lose. When indeed this same government saw it fit to mortgage bauxite that we own that they don't know the value to the Chinese. <laughs> I mean, how do you reconcile the two? You have a problem with a think tank civil society organization which has a track record of analyzing and presenting issues that we can debate and accept or reject in the national interest, doing their analysis based on what they deem to be a solid indices to come out with the potential loss, and yet it is okay for you to mortgage another resource whose value we don't know to the Chinese to get $2 billion. I mean, look, let's face realities. Let's face realities. We truly believe that this agreement it's a ripoff. And we are yet to verify and get to the bottom of what is going on because this is simply not right. The fact that the former Minister for Energy rejected this and now the current Minister for Energy and government have pushed it in this have raises questions. And this argument about Imani's personal banter with uh, Dr. K.K. Sapong, well and good, they have apologized. Let's move on. But should not be used to mean that there couldn't be interest groups benefiting from this renegotiated agreement. I mean, you don't have to. We all know the way the systems work. People get people to fund for them. It, and so, is this something that can be proven? Well, we can prove it, but that doesn't mean that it cannot exist, or that doesn't mean that it has not happened. You and I know, and he knows it. I do. You do. I do. You may try not to admit it today because you are on the other side of the aisle. But I don't. Honestly, I don't. You, you do know that it is entirely possible. Yes. That possibility is. Personalities, probably even within the establishment, within government, could All be right. beneficiaries of this renegotiated agreement. And that is why 
This is only the beginning, I can guarantee you. That this matter, and as much as they use their numbers to get it passed through a voice vote, it's not going to be allowed to pass just like that. We are going to continue the advocacy. We will continue digging. And we will continue to encourage civil society, the Imanis and what have you, to continue the work. Because the resources that belong to the good people of this country must be used to endure or to improve their conditions. And if indeed a previous government saw it fit to negotiate an agreement that was going to give the overwhelming stake to the good people of this country, only for a succeeding government to come and revise it under a new minister who took over from a previous minister who refused to do it, that in itself should raise the red flags. And so where we stand, we continue to stand there. But make no mistake, the plethora of underhanded dealings that we are seeing cannot be allowed to pass without comment. And as we have said and continue to say again, 2020, the good people of Ghana will make a decision. We would have the opportunity to review all of the revisions and renegotiated contracts that we are currently witnessing under this government. Okay, grateful. Right. 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 You, you right. Just, a, just a few, okay. a few yeah. words. Yeah. A few. Uh, okay, a few. And I think that the, the, the journalists of this country do recognize. And on, on, on uh, World Press Freedom Day, mm. uh, I represented the minister to again reiterate our commitment and the practical things that we are doing uh, to enhance their capacity and also to ensure their safety. We have announced that there is a media capacity enhancement program that this government is unrolling. And uh, this is a, a departure from what happened in the past. And you know, uh, when allegations of laptops and money is being shared uh, over the over the tabletop uh, by former operatives of the former government at the Ministry of Information, that is not the kind of capacity enhancement that we are talking about. And uh, we are in stages of uh, 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 the plan and the program to implement that. Again, we government is also uh, taking leadership in establishing a national coordinating mechanism on the safety of journalists. Without a doubt, there have been some unfortunate uh, incidences relative to a journalist. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that we have come a long way from uh, state-sponsored attacks on journalists under my honorable colleague's uh, dispensation when the NDC was in power. We have we had instances in this country where a minister of state encourages people to shit bomb a radio station and called it the citizens' uh, rejoinder. I mean, the state-sponsored. We have moved away from that. It's not happening and, now. And, and I'm say, no, not a, I'm saying to you that there's a difference, and I've, we have com condemned and complained about some incidences of attacks relative to journalists. And the state has been acting to punish uh, those perpetrators and to bring them to book. But when you have Who a state... Who has the state punished? Well, uh, with respect to... The, the, the cases you're talking about. No, but we are, they are under investigation when okay. when people are That's arrested. That's asking the whole yes. state. I'm punished. saying that people are, are being investigated and people, some uh, of the matters are being handled at the NMC and so on and so forth. I know mm. that in the case of a journalist that was attacked by the police, the police administration uh, has agreed to compensate the, the victim. I mean, and this is a movement forward from when the state used to regard those things as a, a citizen rejoinder. Mm. And, and so the people of Ghana do recognize that we are moving forward uh, in that regard. I'm confused and surprised that today uh, my colleague is saying that what a former minister may have done may have been sacrosanct. This same former minister brought something to I said to he parliament. failed to uh, do it. He yeah. refused okay. so, to do it. So, so it, does not, it does not suggest Perhaps that what he did was Quote me properly. Okay. I'm saying, I said he refused to do it. That's what I said. No, he said that he refused to do it. But I'm saying that it's so wondering surprising. why this minister is it doing it. It is surprising that we, we are seeking to suggest today that former ministers, their actions and their comments can be sacrosanct. That same former minister mm. that we make reference to took something to parliament that the NDC members of parliament found uh, uh, major issues with. If he could get it wrong at that time, well, how is it that we argue that, well, then he got it wrong? I'm not suggesting that uh, anything or everything that somebody does uh, can be right or can be wrong. But this attitude of picking and choosing conveniently to want to push uh, an idea as though 
well, okay, uh, somebody uh, has the interest of this country. When you rejected, for instance, uh, his uh, Ameri deal uh, agreement, were you not minded that he is somebody who fairly takes decisions and who acts in the best interest of this country? And for that matter, why then did you uh, rise against the, 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 the presidency? The, uh, 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 which means that. Doc, which means that. Which is, means is, is that. Which that, which means that, that was wrong in refusing. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that that blanket statement. We have to interrogate the particular reasons okay. why somebody may have rejected something at the time. And somebody may accept it going forward. But okay. you make the blanket statement that um, a minister rejected it. And so why is a new, a new minister uh, 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 accepting it? And I ask you, you rejected something from a new minister and accepted something from, from the old minister and accepted something from the new minister. The, the, the Ameri deal, for instance. When Honorable Wache uh, Jaku uh, uh, made his proposals, you stood up against it and, 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 and seriously, seriously so. So you cannot make that categorical statement as a blanket. Okay. Again, we had to differentiate the ACA and the AGM. I think that at a certain point we confused the two. This thing about uh, uh, the percentages that my colleague read, these oil blocks were awarded by the NDC how many years ago? We are, are we able to drill even a pint of oil? No. Honorable, 100% of zero is zero. Sometimes it is overly simplistic to just look at the percentages. You give this oil this at a certain percent, but you are not able to drill well. A good and responsible administration will interrogate why you are not able to drill well and negotiate terms that are able to get Ghana to drill those oils and get a, a value for money for it, get the benefits from, from it. You just sign the agreements and they lie there on the books. You say that you have invested $30 million as the MPC. Since you have invested that money, the money has not given any dividends because we are not, we are not drilling the oil. And so we have had to go and look for uh, some more, uh, 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 if you may, uh, uh, capable companies to come into the industry and give them the terms that are mutually beneficial to Ghana and to those contractors so that they can actually mine the oil, so that the people of Ghana can benefit from it. And that's why, how many uh, oil contracts did the NDC award? 13 or thereabout. How many, uh, 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 how many of those uh, wells have been drilled? Not one. Okay. Because you didn't look at your figures properly. You just went and, and, and did, for want of a better expression, some, some uh, uh, really, really... Let me, let me. I'm grateful. For, I'm grateful for you stopping. So, so we are, so are we moving to a yes, different topic. You touched Very on well. the, that issue quickly. Let's uh, deal with the five minutes and then we'll go on. Uh, generally celebrated over the weekend and the call for more uh, commitment from government. He said government is uh, putting in measures. But are these measures really paying off? Uh, looking at what journalists are going through at the moment. Look, right, let's be honest and straightforward. And I understand my brother. I mean, you know he's a uh, deputy minister for information. information. right. By and large, he's the deputy chief propagandist for the, the party. So he would have to do his best to try and let it look good. <laughs> if not, he'll be called to the big house. Yeah, I've worked there before. I know the way the system functions. So I understand him. But look, let's be, let's be honest. And, and face facts. We can't say that we have achieved 100% in as far as our nation is concerned with regards to the uh, freedoms that uh, journalists are expected to, to have to be able to prosecute or to contribute their quota to the well-being of our nation. We all know the role that the media plays. Mm. And therefore, in a democracy like ours, at every point in time, we must always make a conscious effort to try and increase the space and to try and guarantee their freedom and to try and reward them in ways that would allow them to also do their best in service to nation. But when you have a situation where you have a government uh, that looks at its uh, history or precursors and the claim is made that uh, you know, they are the bastions of democracy, the proponents of uh, rule of law, promoters of freedom of speech. And as I said earlier, you have the current president uh, 
whose, uh, you know, rise to glory also includes the fact that uh, he is deemed to have led the effort to repeal the criminal libel law. So pretending over what we are seeing today, then he gives room for worry. And he knows that we have slided. If we are even to look at the global figures, where we stood, and as far as the global media uh, freedom index is concerned, mm. we have dropped by about four points or so. On the continent that, you know, we dominated for a number of years, uh, today we are no longer number one. Why is that? And it is very simple. First of all, let's take a few examples of present and current issues to do with the vindictive repressal attitude by government officials and government, pro-government apparatchiks towards journalists for doing their work. The most recent one is Edward Adita of Star FM. What is his crime? He did his work. He uncovered some work that was being done in my region of Upper East by a Chinese company, whereupon he was going to expose that uh, from the tapes that have come to the public domain, a minister of state at the office of the president, a former regional minister of mine from the Upper East region, tried to negotiate an arrangement, a bribe, for the journalist to drop the story. It didn't happen. The issue came to the public domain. The minister was pushed, contrary to what we heard, that uh, he had resigned. From what we hear, he didn't resign. Well, was it fast forward, that he has to resign? First, well, we know that he didn't resign. We know. We, we know he was pushed. So he's He was pushed. He okay. was pushed to, okay. to leave. He you was sacked. He, he didn't resign, but he was Yeah, we believe that he okay. was sacked. All right. So, so what you believe, sir? Well, that is my belief. So I'm entitled to it. But the fact is... If I believe something, if I say this is black, you can't tell me it is red. You, are, it, not, if it, if you it, are not it, in my spectacles. Even when okay. You <laughs> are not in my spectacles. Okay. That is my no, belief. No, no, but the point I'm making is that... <laughs> then he, 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 we begin hearing that he is being threatened. Um, a day or so ago, his residence was attacked and ransacked. And I know being from the region, that indeed those tax who went there went after the journalists. He had the hint the night before and therefore relocated. Now, let's look at the issue of Manasi Azure, who we now know has actually been flown out of the country for fear of his life. What did Manasseh do? He conducted an investigative piece which severely indicted government Mm. And even raised and presented a direct linkage between the president of the country and the militia group training at the former seat of government, now known as Castle. When that peace came up, government resisted, a statement was issued, the media house that he worked for was asked to apologize, the group DI decided to go to court. And as we speak now, his life is so threatened that he is now in a hideout. And can we even forget the situation where a man who is seen to be very close to the president, many see him as the president's spiritual father, his prophet, on two occasions, himself has gone to studios to attack journalists, and yet has walked free. On the other hand, a journalist who actually indicated that he had seen a vision telling him that this Manasseh that today is in hiding could be endangered for the expose that he did and presented to us was actually wheeled in using the state security apparatus by a government that believes that we should applaud it for doing the best to promote journalism. And have you forgotten what Ajia Fati, everybody knows her? Who doesn't know that, you know, she is a very close associate of uh, the, the president and that she's a strong, recognized activist of the MPP? She assaulted a journalist. Major Derek Odro, member of parliament, deputy minister for defense, ordered two of his guys to assault a journalist. I can cite not less than 10 instances under this Akufuado or Safumafu Bahamia regime where journalists have been abused, 
assaulted and attacked. So when he wants to draw in what happened in the past, yes, we recognize that, you know, of course, there can be misconduct here and there, but boot for boot, one on one, everyone who has followed the trajectory since the MPP took over the reins of the governance of this country would come to the conclusion that this government is most intolerant. Any and everything that the government believes is going to dent its reputation, regardless of where it comes from, even from its own traditional allies, they will come after you. And that is why today, Ghana cannot boast. We can hold our heads high in as far as media freedom is concerned. But as the former president right. and my boss to and my presidential candidate, President John Daman Mama, the incoming president of Ghana, said the journalists need to soldier on to perform their responsibilities, and the state has a responsibility to protect them. The state and those who are being paid by the resources of the state, the taxpayers' money, clearly should not be using that resource to finance and promote the abuse and vindictive attitude that we are seeing being perpetrated, both overtly and covertly, against journalists. They are also Ghanaian citizens. They have a role to play, and we have a collective responsibility to tolerate them, no matter how unpalatable their work may seem to us. And that is why we, the minority, we are resolved to continue to do our best. We in the NDC will continue to do our best to support the work of journalists, even in these very dire conditions in right. which they find themselves. Uh, I'm grateful. Right. Let me go to a part. Uh, right. uh, part. So the, the, the key thing is that even though, like you said, we, we, we're coming from a point, we're beginning to see the, the slide. But you had earlier enumerated what government is doing to fix the problem. Now, are these seeing results? Well, Brad, uh, thank you very much. The safety of journalists, mm -hmm. particularly, and the safety of everybody in this country is a shared responsibility. And the, the role that the state has to play, the state continues to play. And I tried to differentiate to you before that under the NDC, we had attacks by sponsored by the state, state actors. But we're still first. Let me finish. As as yeah, that's not correct. Concerned. That's not correct. We were first a year ago. The state, that, the state, the state uh, attacked. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yes, directed uh, the state uh, to uh, attack uh, journalists. I'm telling you, state operators. And but, I, but, I gave but, you in, the, uh, in the uh, case uh, where uh, the police no, attack the uh, journalists, uh, is, uh, is that uh, the state? Is that the government? If I may. Pass go. So it is never correct what Dr. Park said. And it cannot be correct that we were still the same. No, we were not. Under this dispensation, what was our well, under this dispensation last year, mm. we became the first. So we became the first last year, yes. 2018. Yes. Okay. So what has changed? And, 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 and regrettably, why, why so it cannot, why it cannot be true mm. that under the NDC, uh, and he says for a long time, that is never correct. And number two, Mr. Mr. Park says he knows how the system works because he used to work in the Jubilee House. The way the system... I worked in the Flagstaff House, not the Jubilee House. Not the Flagstaff House. Mm -hmm. where, I, I that's where you call it that. Yes, no problem. But how the system worked under the NDC is definitely not how the system works under the MPP. It's different. So under the NDC, if you're supposed to see red and call it black, because that is your belief, and you have to say it is black, even though, admittedly, it is red, if you don't say it is black, you'll be called to the Flagstaff House or Jubilee House. Uh, as we, we rightly so want to call it. That is a pedestrian oh, point. No, Make I your main know. point no, and let's go on. I was, no, I was indicating my own personal opinion. Uh, uh, abundance of the heart. Look, deal with the issue. Deal with it, don't worry. I was here when you spoke. I was here when you spoke. Was a journalist killed under our auspices? Several. Several journalists were Really? Yes. And I can give you a Can we stay on Right. If I, no. If in 2018, allow me to respond. I listened to. And in 2019, we have slept. Is it not worrying? No, I'm saying that at least I had to respond to some of the deliberate misinformation that has been put out. <laughs> and I was here and I kept crying and I listened throughout. You understand? We can go on with a long list of attacks 
that was perpetrated under the NDC by leading members of the NDC. Mm. Mr. Stand like who? Mr. Standogbe, for instance, who assaulted and broke a journalist's camera, was not just a party of Aparachiki, like you, you try to name a party of Aparachiki. He was at the game of affairs at the, the, the so-called then Flagstaff House. Mm. The personal bodyguard of uh, the, the, the former president just recently assaulted and, and broke the eye of a, a Joy FM uh, uh, reporter. As we speak now, the gentleman continues to work with the NDC. So even in opposition, you cannot show leadership on so, these matters. So, so to argue, to you, argue you took over I will, I will and deal, then with, those, scene, I will deal right. with those matters. Mm. So to argue that journalists in this country can and will feel safer under an NDC is for me the, 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 the most unsubstantiated statement that can, it is not supported by any fact. Right. Do you think journalists themselves know it? Pius, do you think journalists are safe today? Look, I can assure you mm. that the journalists in this country do recognize that the system today is more conducive to really? their work. Okay. And you so speak about somebody else. That's look, what you're saying. Look, I'm, I'm, are you no, being honest? No, no, please. Did you no, go to no, church no, yesterday? No, 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 you're missing the point. If you're lying, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. I think your question is, are journalists safe today? Well, I'm saying that safety is not a constant concept. Every day we have to work at it. People are, I mean, attitudes and characters are changing. And the states and government has a responsibility to respond. Government is trying its best. We are doing what we have to do to ensure the safety of journalists. And that is why we have even started a national coordinating mechanism on the safety of journalists. So you cannot say whether and journalists so, today so, are safe so, or uh, not. That is what you cannot no, but say. Why not? You are, you are here doing your work. You are a journalist. Are you safe? No, I'm not safe. What, what is wrong with your safety? Well, I, 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 our colleagues are being killed. No, I'm asking. No, please. Let's not. Let's look. On a daily basis, mm. crime still happens across the world, and in, in Ghana included. And some of the casualties and victims of those crimes are journalists. Right. But to make a general statement that journalists feel unsafe means that you suspect or you see. A, a scheme, a, an agenda to attack would journalists. You, would you say some journalists are unsafe? But I'm saying, I'm, I, I, look, I have reviewed literature about attacks on journalists for the last five years, in, and it is alarming. It is not different from what we see today. What is different, in my view, is the government response. Why? We didn't have a national coordinating mechanism in the, on the safety of journalists in the past. Mm. But today we have. What we had before, what the NDC attempted to do was to take some one million CDs, which they shared to a few journalists, and some argued that they bought laptops and, and, and so on and so forth. Today, we are institutionalizing a proper capacity enhancement program. Today, we have passed, and then the NDC, several governments came and go, we are able to pass the RTI. Under the, the current president, when he was attorney general, mm. we, we repealed the criminal libel. And so, our commitment to ensuring the safety and, and securing the environment under which journalists work is manifest. It's not, it's not just by okay. word of mouth. It's clearly manifest. Great. Right. Now, to pick on one or two unfortunate crimes committed in which uh, uh, journalists are, are victims, to therefore indicate that uh, journalists feel less safe today than they felt some time past, can, for me, it's, 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 not, it's wrong. Pius, in the case it, it's, of... It's wrong. And he talks of, about the Adeti... Uh, the Adeti... Pius, in the case of Ahmed Swale, there were processes. It is not a one incident. There were processes. His picture was shown, and then he, some threat, yeah, but and then you he see, was killed. So but don't, 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 right. It is, it is... No, no, no. It, it is it simplistic. It just happened. There were no, processes. I'm saying that it is simplistic. It's simplistic to, to connect the dots in that manner. You'll be, we couldn't you, have you, stopped no, it from I'm happening. saying that we, you'll be, you'll have be, stopped you'll be what you seek to just do right now mm. is to connect showing of pictures and the unfortunate incidents. I think that these are matters that we should allow the police to make a determination on. Okay. It may stand to reason. It may stand to reason. But at our level as journalists, people who have the mic and the world is watching us, we must be guided how we 
conclude and, 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 and connect the dots. Otherwise, we would get ahead of the police and even create a misleading impression. My brother speaks about Adeti. Ad Ad mm. We have a government that takes action when the, the journalists do their job. And that is most satisfying to most journalists. Under the NDC, when such similar incidences occurred, government did not bother to even take any action. And that actually is very unsatisfying to a lot of the journalists. In this case, at least action was taken. The gentleman realized that what he did uh, uh, in his own words did not conform to the to the 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 the, 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 the persona and the quality of leadership that the president exhumes and so he decides to resign we hear later on that they have been attacks on his house we have condemned those but we are so, yet to so establish the process, who are those the processes there. we are yet to he, establish he, he who makes are those the man how are we sure that is the state not mandated to protect sure? this person yes i'm saying that and now his house is better no I'm, I'm saying that the state so that's the worry but 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 so you're, you're suggesting it's not, it's not no, but one, it's, one, one it, it is not the case that when a journalist publishes a story and the, the next state morning resigns then the next is morning the state, then the next can morning the state protect the, that but i'm saying to you that i'm saying to you that the state has to follow a process and I, I i have had cause to speak to this matter okay in the first place the gentleman has had to go to the police and make a, a formal complaint and the police has to make an assessment of his okay. security let me get situation and, 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 and and prefer the necessary but how are we even sure <laughs> that these people who right how are we sure that he didn't know anything it is, about it? It is obvious that uh, Pius and I will not agree. And, and that is, it is normal because uh, he, he has a government to defend and I have a government to expose for his shortcomings. But you see, is, is it not very interesting that uh, with regards to the three topical issues to do with journalists' lives being threatened that we can point to today, two of them have to do with investigations that go to the heart of the presidency. I speak about the number 12 expose. I even must add the issue of the galaxy fraud too. And indeed, the one uh, to do with uh, the, the militia. What does that tell you? And as you said earlier, you see, we but can try. In that militia. What we, is that? We, what, can, what is we, can, we can try to militia dismiss. Militia. We, yeah, the, the Manasse, the Manasse, the Manasse expose, the, the Manasse expose, in the case, and it indicated very clearly, he's not trying to allow me to make my point, but the point I want to make, the point I want to make is this, it is very clear that there is intolerance, No, no, no. that government is complicit, No, 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 no. journalists don't feel safe, they are doing work that should support the forward march of this country, particularly in the fight against corruption, but because General Most of very, very the serious. pointers are going to the government of the day. But you are here with the journalists. They Which are you under attack. You are here and with the journalists. And that is a fact. Regardless okay. of whatever program government may put in place. And as long as journalists are continually being attacked and vilified, maligned and insulted because of their work and because it is likely to indict the sitting government and the sitting president, Journalists can never feel safe in I'm this I'm grateful. Country. He's a member of parliament for the Bursa South constituency. He's a member of the NDC, Dr. Clement Park. Jen, Jen, I'm grateful Jen, Jen. for your time with us. And uh, Paris Enam Hajide is uh, Deputy Minister of Information. Grateful for your Monday morning. Stay here. There is more coming up. And we want to make talk, it fun. That's okay. why it is, you know, a game. I see. Yeah. How do we play? Okay. We play by texting very simple mm. quotes. So it's star seven one three mm. star one four hat. Okay. Car okay, Carol that's, that's on Car 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 Carol's yeah. side. Okay. Star seven one three it's star one four hash. It's, okay. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And then you, you once you, you dial this, you you subscribe. Mm -hmm. And the questions are simple such that it's true or false. Oh, so okay. if you get true mm. And it's false. You know what the answer really is. Okay. So as much as we are playing, we are getting to know mm -hmm. what the goals stand for, how we are applying it to our everyday lives, and okay. making sure that mm. everything we do mm -hmm. drives towards that goal. Because guess what? At the end of these goals, mm -hmm. 
we are going to make Ghana, mm. make the world a better place for us to live in. I see. Interesting. Yes. How many times can I, for example, text star 713 star 14 hash to play? Okay, so once you dial once, mm. your number is locked into the platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you just keep getting the questions as long as you keep answering them. Ah, so okay. the answer triggers the next question. I see. Mm -hmm. yes. How many questions, you know, in one session, for example? You cannot answer as many as you can as long as you keep answering yes. questions will keep popping up pop, pop because up. at the end of the day so if i can do 100 system, questions yeah, it will keep popping because we've got lots of Ooh. questions for people fire to answer away. and the reward system is such that whoever is able to respond more and accrue a lot of points gets to win yes. oh so, so it's points it, based it is, yes. yeah mm. so the questions are you know inexhaustible right so, so once you answer you accrue a lot more points and, and that will increase your chances yes. of winning you so, spoke about the car mm -hmm. and other things that are yes. there to be so, won. what do we what have? we are going to do is every week on giovanni's show on 3fm mm, 3fm drive, drive. yeah mm. we are going to be giving mm. winners or points builders mm. that, that's the right word okay. points builders mm. so at the end of every week every okay. friday okay giovanni is going to give away we have phone credits, we have movie. cash, okay. we have movie, movie tickets, tickets. Mm. we have um, electronic gadgets. Okay. It's a wide range of everything so everything, there. everything. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we are just going to make it fun, okay, educative, rewarding, and at the end of the day, have a sweet Ghana and sweet. So Ghana. you know, it's going to be on a three FM drive every mm -hmm. weekday from two PM to five thirty PM with Giovanni Elolo Kalim. And uh, you gotta play at the end of the game, mm -hmm. you've said that you want Ghanaians to get a better understanding mm -hmm. of it. But we get a better understanding to do what? So you get a better understanding to see where you place, how you can contribute okay. uh, to the SDGs. Mm. And it's also very important to understand how the goals are relevant to your own life. Okay. Because most of the time, it's like we have a set you know, of goals which people feel they are so abstract, mm -hmm. they are sort of from the people mm. what we're trying to do is localize the goals okay. and make it applicable to mm. people's lives mm. and that's why we're doing these questions okay. we're doing the game mm. so the game is definitely going to show you by asking the questions you it's going to prick your mind it's mm. going to expose you mm -hmm. to the kind of things that mm. you can mm. do about the goals how you can switch off your light okay. how you know the little things the little that things. we can all I, i've do. had some, somebody come to me and ask me ah, but sustainable cities and communities there yeah. what am i supposed to do <laughs> to, <laughs> to 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 make the goal see, the goals achievable are a social contract mm. yes and what we do with social contracts is that once people get to know they are empowered to be able to make their leaders accountable, right? So if we're talking about sustainable cities and infrastructure, okay. once you get asked questions around that, you mm. know that this is what your city planners are supposed to do for you. Yeah. And so it exposes you, it empowers you, it gives you knowledge. Mm. And so by that, you are able to make your leaders accountable. I see. And that's what we're trying to do. Well, we'll come and pick your closing thoughts, but I want to show you something on, on my giant screen on what the reward systems are and how interactive the whole platform is. Come with me and let's find out. Okay, so... We're going straight to sdggame.3news.com. If you go there, you find all the examples. And very beautiful, interactive. Mm -hmm. It has the home page, it has mechanics, reward system, terms and conditions, contact. And it has a beautiful lady with the, uh, the <laughs> color wheel with it as well. So it welcomes you to the Sustainable Development uh, Goals game. And it talks about the objectives. Then you have the introduction to the SDGs, what Doctor was talking about, how to educate ourselves and to be abreast of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's, what's, what it is that we need to contribute to be able to achieve this by 2020. And then a promotion as well. Comes with Giovanni. Uh, well, the, his diastema is not showing now this morning. <laughs> he had to close up. But the, the SDG ambassador as well, he is uh, Giovanni. And so every weekday, if you tune into 3FM Drive from 2 p.m., to 5 30 p.m you get a chance to so let's let's go and there you have we have winners okay your winners will pop up every your point will pop up but let's check out the reward system how it functions uh and uh you can always go back to this and check it out so this is the reward system it says each unique number that gets to play the game stands a chance of 
being picked once uh, the, the first level is done. Weekly winners will be selected based on highest points accrued. Prizes ranges from cash, airtime, electrical gadgets, movie tickets, and more. Final winners will always also be selected based on who has the highest point at the end of the entire 100 days. So 100 days challenge. What are the terms and conditions? I'm sure we can find out quickly. Uh, maybe Doc would want to throw a bit of light on it. But plenty, plenty about... Uh, 22 bullet points interesting there but it's sure is rewarding i'm sure we can pick your closing thoughts though but what are some of the key terms and conditions that we need to know uh, we'll go to mobile content first okay. because they will do the collation and everything lily what are we to know as terms and conditions from your end you can't be part of it mm. i can't i can't, be part I can't of play it. you can't play even though i know the answers to the questions that's, that's why you can't play but why because i want the car myself okay but so family and friends mm -hmm. cannot be part of this if if you happen to be part of the whole um, partnership yeah. so anybody SDGs in the SDGs 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 unit cannot play okay. media general cannot play mobile content cannot play right but aside that um, you you just have to be somebody who has a mobile phone okay mm -hmm. who is registered it doesn't matter what kind of phone no it doesn't okay. matter but the number has to be registered to right. your name right. with a network because right. we don't want the case whereby you're coming to redeem the prize mm. and then it's not we you. You're coming you. along, you should come with your ID card okay. so that we know who you are. Right. And you should be ready to come on all media channels. Right. These are the main um, conditions from your end. Need. Doc, yeah. any conditions from your end as well in your closing thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that, is, you know, the, the most essential parts have been covered by... Um, Lily, mm. but what I'd like to say is that you know this is like a call to action. Yeah. Okay. That you know Guineans, this one is not for a certain group of people mm. to play. It's mm. for everybody. Mm. If you have a YAM phone, you can play. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a smartphone, you can play. Mm. So you just have to be interested to right. want to win a car, free okay. car, and then you know you can you play. just do that. So yes. let's seize the opportunity mm. to learn. Let's mm. seize the opportunity to have fun. Okay. And then at the end of the day. It's not just, you know, at the end of the 100 days that you win in mm. something. You're going to get something every week. So right. do tune in to Giovanni's show mm. from 2 o'clock, I guess. 2, 2 p.m. to yeah, 5 30 p.m. weekdays. And then, you know, you can participate because there is an SDG segment on the show and we can learn and have fun. I see. Lily, you always whispering something? Um, look out for the sick tune. Sick tune. We have a very lovely song uh -huh. done yes. by uh -huh. Riala. Riala. Uh -huh. So once uh -huh. you hear that, you know it's the SDG time okay. on Giovanni's Giovanni show. show. And the short code is simple. Star, star 713, star 14 hash. Heard. I take it again. Star 713, star 14 hash. Let's play. Let's educate mm. ourselves and let's win some good Have prizes. Fun. Play, yes. educate, learn, impact society yes. and win big. That's the conversation here. And the SDG show is, uh, has been launched and uh, you have the opportunity to win on a 3FM drive every weekday with Giovanni, my brother. Thank you, Dr. Luis Carol Donko, who's a policy and communications analyst at the SDG's advisory unit and also Lily Mockley is the branch manager of mobile content ladies thank you very much for your time thank you for having absolutely. us absolutely we'll see you after the break with some more here on tv3 new day don't go away I can thank you very much indeed. I've been joined by three ladies. We're talking how to give women a voice, a strong voice in governance in this country. We've been at it for some time, but we want to really, really measure the results and see how we're doing because the district assembly elections are coming up. Are women actively participating in governance issues? Well, I've been joined this morning by Gloria Kankama. She's with Abantu for Development. Gloria, thank you very much for your time. How are you doing? Great. Uh, Charity Summer uh, is uh, from the Ajekojo Electoral Area. Charity, thank you very much for your time as well. And Justine much. Kumoji is also from Ajekojo, uh, Sun City. City. Yes, specifically. Ladies, welcome. Thank you very much. i start with you, uh, ladies. Why did you decide, first of all, to want to get into governance? Thank you. Mm. Once again, for having us. I we want to, or I want to contest this coming uh, upcoming assembly election mm. because uh, I have an ab ambition as a woman to contribute to society okay. and then to the community in which I find myself. Mm. Yes, in terms of sanitation problems, in terms of uh, 
uh, sanitation in terms of development. Mm. At Jekojo, we have come so far that we are living in Tema West, mm. but the environment doesn't deserve Tema West. Okay. We are far, far behind Tema. We are far, far behind them. In terms of development. In terms of development. Okay. In terms of social amenities. Okay. In terms of education. Mm. In terms of everything, we are far, far behind. Right. So that is the reason why I wanted to contest the mm. assembly election okay. so that I can also contribute or add my voice to mm. society. I see. Madam, how about you? Why do you want to participate in yeah. a male dominated space? I want to participate in uh, assembly election simply because of my area okay. development. Okay. Because the problem in my area is too much in terms of uh, development. Mm. Because it's a new site that we came to settle okay. the place. Okay. So I know that if I come inside, I'll be able to bring more development to the area. I've started. I see. You've yes. started already. Yeah, I've started already in okay. 2005. Okay. That was the time I started the development of the community. Right. Bringing people together, mm. mobilizing to do the cleanup exercise. Okay. Then the environment and the buildings and whatever, mm. they have to plan the building in order. Okay. So that they can be well done in the area. I see. So I know if I get a note mm. to the district assembly level, I'll be able to do more than that. Gloria, from Ubuntu's point of view, the inclusion of women in our governor system, are we making inroads? Are they still getting the blockades? What is it? Actually, we, uh, we are there, but then we are stepping back after each district assembly. I mean, mm -hmm. looking at the local government, right. after each district assembly election, you see that we draw back. Why? At, um, sensitization. Mm social construct and also how far we are competing in for instance when you take elections in ghana okay even though our democratic credentials are good mm. out there and in africa in west africa right but when you come inside it's a kind of masculine mm. struggle mm. women find it difficult not find it difficult even when they are daring right. to enter and, and they are good so much mm. ex excellent if they are good and actually most of them are good right it, it becomes a masculine struggle so most of the time it's not like we are not trying but mm. we are trying our best mm. civil society is trying its best like abantu and stagana mm. is doing now mm. sensitizing women training even younger ones persons with disability mm. all of it to go into the district local governance is, is it a national psyche problem not to allow women to take active part because the president has said that look a certain portion of his government government will be left for women to do is that message trickling down into the local areas where people say oh this woman she is good she can be our assembly woman let's give it to her is it trickling down we are we are not even halfway through right. look at how far we have come and when i link it to for instance the au mm. decade right. and now look at us now we have only seven percent mm. in local governance as women so <sighs> it is not going down at all, even though we are trying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even wonder, because Abantu, for instance, and Star Ghana and other partners have been training women over the years, mm -hmm. since 2010, and other uh, civil society organizations, we are trying with UNDP and all that. But still, when it comes to election, you don't know what happened. Look at it. Women, when it comes to campaigning and mobilizing votes, mm -hmm. women are the leader right they spearhead the men but, use them to, but to when rally people. it comes to casting the vote for the woman you don't find her let me ask you madam so madam sun city i like to call you yeah. because it must resonate with the people yeah. what are the key challenges that you have faced ever since you decided that look i'm going yeah, to contest this is, for this is for, my third year mm -hmm. of contesting and you haven't won and i haven't won why yeah because the area is big and then the wherever i went I, do, I couldn't reach that area okay because the development of the area is sun city right that's where i put on the, the electrification project 
the water right. immobilized. Mm -hmm. So Ajay Kojo and the Kanehu was not part of it. Okay. So in terms of campaign time, they actually don't know me as such. Ah, you I see. see. Because it's too big. Okay. Uh -huh. So now that we have been divided into three, mm. but I know. Did, did you get support from, say, the assembly or uh, no, groupings in the community churches from, yeah. and all of so that? So because of that, now some of us go to know that even party cannot support, uh, assembly cannot support. So you have to work on your own and then do your homework well hmm. before you can but, but you've gone three times and, and you are not uh, mm. you are you're not down yet yes so you're you encouraged to still contest yeah. i see but so, what are your own challenges yes thank you my challenges in my area is uh, oh a man is not able to do it you a woman hmm. but i'm telling them that this is my first time i will prove to them that with god all things are possible and then uh, it's not easy being dominated, being, uh, uh, being among men dominated uh, programs or opposition. It's not easy at all. Right. Do you if, feel bullied sometimes? Yes, sometimes you feel bullied. Sometimes they'll look at you and say, ah, you two, a woman, go and sit somewhere. And I said, no, this is not a woman affair. Mm. What a man can do, a woman can also the, do it as Do your well. husbands, for example, support you from home? Your husband, your brothers, your, your sons, do they support you to, to do this? Yes, thank you. With my, my husband supported my family. They were all behind me. For instance, when I organized cleanup exercise, because that was my main attention, that was what brought me into the Race. Mm. When I organize a cleanup, it's like you see all the people who come are my family okay. and my children. Yes, they were supportive. I see. They were very supportive in terms of cleanup. You see, elderly men mm. trying to push me, trying to encourage me to go ahead. I can win it. I okay. can do it. Mm. So yes, they support you. They support Great. me, but the community. That is where the problem you, is. The, the community must come along. The I'll, I'll community give you... doesn't support as I expected them to be supporting. Mm, mm. Although they are doing their best, but uh, it's not enough. I see. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, let's wrap up the conversation with you. What will be the outlook for you from where you sit at uh, Bantu? Uh, we are not making the progress that we so much desire. What do you say? 30 seconds for you. I think that um, government... Because the obligation lies on government. We have this act since 1994, the District Assembly Act. Mm. And then if you, re you remember, 2004, we had a fund, District Assembly Fund, mm. for local government. But okay. this is not pooling. So we are calling on Ministry of Gender and all other partners right. to come on board. The okay. District Assembly Common Fund, for instance, we can allocate a portion for the females who go into local governor. Okay. So that, that would be a push and mm. then an encouragement to the other women mm. who are trying to come on board. And then we also need affirmative action bill. Right. Because if it is there, at mm. least, and then we can say that, oh, this district, we need, because we have five unit committee members and one assembly member. Right. So three, three. Okay. Or even two, four. Thank you. Justine, take, take a bite on it. Your closing thoughts. Your people are watching. What do you say to them? Uh, the way forward. Yeah, the way forward of me is that the uh, Sun City people have to wake up because I know they like me mm. because I've been working with them for 10 years now when I'm with them. I am the first at least over there. Right. Then I've been the secretary to mobilize the community with my two men, mm. Mr. Titi and Mr. Alfredo. Right. Okay. They were the key members that collabed with me and okay. then we okay. moved together. Mm. Because I was a businesswoman, okay. they don't have time to go all over. Okay, so you so were so, so you telling them to wake up. Yes, so okay. they should wake up and give the support to me. I see. Because they know what I can do. I see. Charity, you have the final thoughts, uh, 30 seconds for you as well. Thank you very much. I'm just pleading with Fajie Kujo, the people of Fajie Kujo electoral area, that the man has been there for the three or 30 years or for so long. This is a time that a woman also is competing. So they should please support the woman mm. and see what can God do to the woman also. Thank you. And then uh, please, mm. we are also appealing to the government to support us through our campaigns. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you.
é cagado. With abundance, I wish you as we can to the best of our ability. If they are qualified, give them a role to play and push them and encourage them. And they are also uh, a portion of the common fund to be made available to them and for government to pass the affirmative action bill. My name is Jonah Hughes. To all our friends at the uh, airport in the hospital, thank you very much and congratulations one more time to Tim Tubroni. I'll see you tomorrow, but know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it. Only you can achieve it.